percent to their own low concentration, you know, 80 percent, in an attempt to equalize that. That sounds kind of like fudging. And so there's a, another way of looking at this that I think kind of helps explain it. Now this only works if the membrane, you know, lets the water back and forth, but not the proteins like a living cell membrane. And uh, basically, let's see if I can find a, uh, yeah, I can use the bottom of this uh, to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about here. Uh, is because uh, these are permanent markers, so once I do this, <laughs> it's done. All right, so here's a, you know, here's one of the pores in the membrane, uh, and uh, we'll say, you know, here's a water molecule out here, and so the, you know, water molecules dancing around, you know, can uh, get in uh, to this pore, you know, it's from several different angles and so on. But now let's uh, take, uh, imagine we put a great big protein molecule on the inside. So here's a big protein molecule. And so in effect, what the protein molecules and other big molecules in the cell do is uh, make it harder to get out of the cell. So a water molecule coming from this angle, you know, could hit and, and still bounce into the cell. From this uh, angle, you know, could hit and still bounce into the cell. Could come at this angle, you know, get into the cell easily. Or, this angle and get into the cell easily. And so you might say there's a, if it hit dead on, you know, it might bounce back out. But there's basically a large, I'm thinking this three dimensionally, a large cone of entry. So I'll put it that way large uh, cone of entry. There's uh, lots of ways that a water molecule can get in. Okay, easy in, that's another way to say it. It's easy to get in. But when a water molecule tries to get out, let me, I'll switch over to black for that. Water molecule tries to get out. Lots of water molecules are blocked. This one, you know, it hit that, would have gone through, but this thing's in its way, so it just bounces out. This one would have gone through, but it bounces away. Same thing on this side. So there's really only a few water molecules at a steep angle that really can get out of the cell. And so it's, uh, because of these uh, protein blockers, okay, we can call them, uh, then it's hard to get out. And so they tend to accumulate uh, inside of cells. Okay, and so that's, uh, that's what's going on here, kind of at the statistical level. And so water is diffusing from its own high or low concentration. And basically what's going on is all the clutter inside the living cell is making it harder for the water molecules to get out than it was for the water molecules to get in. Well, let's face it. If water molecules keep coming in, what? It's going to build up some pressure. Okay, so the cell is, you know, it's already full, and now your brain is absorbing more water, so the cell is going to tend to swell up and so there's going to create a pressure here, and this is called osmotic pressure. Uh, now, some of you think osmosis is a theory of learning. It's not, okay? <laughs> so you don't learn, you know, just by sitting next to someone who's smart and absorbing. <laughs> uh, but osmotic pressure is a real phenomenon, and uh, it supplies the power to the plant world. And, you know, plants don't have muscles. In fact, you know, they would think it, they would be, you know, offended at the thought they had to use muscle power. You know, how many of you can grab the corner of the foundation of your house and just lift it up? Okay, not many of you can do that. How many of you have ever seen a little sapling grab the corner of your house and just lift it up? <laughs> or take your four inch or six inch slab of your driveway and just split it apart, you know, and move it away? or crack big boulders in the mountains and so on. Osmotic pressure can do all those things. And so osmotic pressure is a tremendously powerful force and it enables plants to do tremendously powerful things. Uh, and so it, osmotic pressure, in a sense, serves as, uh, you know, the muscles in the plant world. And an average cell like this will have about six atmospheres of pressure which would be about 90 pounds per square inch of pressure. Uh, and there are zillions of these little cells, and the pressure can be really inexorable. And they can do a lot of damage, or they can do a lot of help. Uh, you know, cracking boulders, building soil, things like that are generally beneficial. Lifting sidewalks, moving foundations are generally not beneficial. <clears throat> and so this is a tremendous kind of force. 
Um, there's one, I, may have, I don't know, I may have told you about this on another occasion, uh, but there's a little orchid uh, in Australia that makes use of osmotic power, uh, sometimes called a hinge orchid, sometimes called the, the hammer orchid. And so, uh, like orchids, it's got four petals kind of here and there, and then it's got one petal uh, kind of out in the front. And in this particular case, this little petal hung that kind of stands out like that is colored like the abdomen of a female wasp. And so as a male wasp flies around, notices this, lands on this petal that looks like the abdomen of a female wasp, and the weight on that you know, is transmitted to the little stalk that holds up the petal, and there's a little osmotic thing, a little osmotic hinge there. When that hinge is triggered, and that's where it gets the name hinge orchid, but when that hinge is triggered, wham, <laughs> gets the name hammer orchid. <laughs> The petal flips up, wasp and all, slams the wasp into all the, into pollen, and of course the wasp winds up dusted with pollen, and as he flies out of sight, you can hear him say, wow, what a woman. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, plants can do all sorts of things with osmosis. Uh, this is also, of course, uh, uh, crucial for transfusions. Not only do you have to get the right blood type, uh, but you know in the field you may not have time to do a, you know blood transfusion based on type, so you can just transfuse plasma. Uh, but you don't want to just use distilled water. And so if you say, you know, see somebody bleeding and their blood volume is going down, you, you almost can try it because they're going to die anyway. But if you inject them with distilled water, that water rushes into the red blood cells and they all explode. So you've actually maybe hastened their death. Or if you make it too salty, you know, sucks the water right out of red blood cells and they all crinkle up and don't function anymore. And so you need to have just 9 tenths percent salt solution uh, is the uh, osmotic balance of blood. So just a little bit of salt. You know, and distilled water could save somebody's life that was bleeding too much and you didn't have anything else to, to give them. And so osmosis is extremely crucial. It's just a special case of diffusion. It's usually you're talking about something diffusing in water. In this case, you're talking about the diffusion of water. And it's through a membrane that lets water through and holds a 